I have to take passport pictures, so if the girlies lied, I'm pulling up and we are going to have a couple of words. TikTok might have just changed my makeup game, and I'm about to put y'all on. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to Boss Girlified. It is your girl, Tima. It was made by me. Girl, I'm whipping out the tier list. We are going to be trying TikTok viral makeup hacks. So I know y'all have been seeing these viral hacks everywhere. And I had to come on here and try them with y'all. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. First, let's start off with my base. Immediately, I thought about this video. If you wear makeup, watch. Change your whole routine and try this instead. Moisturize first. Then after moisturizing, take some translucent powder. I usually use the Fit Me one, and I just lightly dab it all over my face. Not too much. Then take some setting spray. It could be any setting spray. I usually use the NYX one. After the setting spray, take a primer and just put your primer. Also, wait for the setting spray to dry first. Then just put on your foundation and just see what happens and how amazing your fucking makeup is gonna look. And it's gonna stay on 24 seven and it's not gonna creep. Now girls, okay? I am the type of girl, I will go to the gym with a beat. Cause it's iconic. And I love to do iconic shit. But because my skin is dry, I have to use products that are hydrating. And the only caveat to using hydrating products is that they move around a lot. So I have been looking for a good little prep for my base. And this might truly be her. I'm going to be moisturizing with a thicker moisturizer because my skin is a little bit dry. Moisturizer done. I'm gonna use this one that I use for blush normally. I'm a little bit scared to do this because I'm just a little bit nervous that I'm gonna have a white cast. And I'm so glad I chose to use this powder because look, just avoiding my super dry areas. If you're gonna do this, I would definitely recommend you use a powder like this because I feel like I have more control over it. Like you're not tempted to pick up more powder because it's pressed. The fact that I'm doing this before I do my primer makes me a little bit nervous, but if it works, I know it's gonna eat. I think I'm just gonna use the all-nighter. I am just gonna tap it into my skin. I feel like it'll just help everything absorb a lot better. I'm scared that I'm gonna get some type of peeling. I'm just gonna start by patting this into my skin first. Ooh, see, that's why I was scared to rub it. I am getting a little bit of shifting, but it's not moving around too, too much, so I feel like if you let everything sit for a little bit longer, you would be good to go. Even the parts that's moving in, it's very easy to blend or pat back into the skin so it all looks really seamless. I would recommend letting everything absorb into your skin first for at least like five minutes, but I know sometimes we don't always have that time. But I would say at least when you spray the setting spray, let it sit for a little bit and then use your primer. But honestly, all of these products are blending together a lot better than I expected them to. Okay. I was a little bit scared because I used the e.l.f. Power Grip primer. And I had a feeling that based on past experiences with certain products and certain prep routines, that it would move around a lot, which it kind of did. But honestly, it didn't move around as much as I thought it would. And it didn't leave any type of white cast at all. Like it all blended in very, very seamlessly. Now, I feel like you could completely avoid any type of movement of any product if you were to put, um, like, give yourself a little, like, space it out a little bit if you have time. So, for example, just apply the moisturizer when you do your skincare in the morning. Um, wait maybe, like, an hour, go eat breakfast, go do what you gotta do, come back, um, put some translucent powder on your face, get every product out you're gonna use for the day, let that sit for at least five minutes, and then go in with the setting spray. I would even say maybe use two layers of setting spray if you uh, don't want to risk it. <laughs> let that sit while you maybe do your hair or whatever the case may be honestly not only did my makeup go on extremely smooth but it stayed girls and i don't know if it was just that or a combination of the other steps that i'm gonna follow up with and bring y'all along with me on but let me tell y'all something that truly did work the biggest thing that worked for me with this trick is smile lines 
OMG, I am the type of girl I will get smile lines within the first 10 minutes of doing my makeup. We're starting off pretty good. I'm gonna have to put it in devoured. Absolutely devoured. Now for like the base. If you're ever wondering why celebrities' makeup seems to look so much better than ours, stop. I'm gonna tell you how to get that look because I just learned about how to get this look like a couple days ago. My makeup in the last two days has looked better than it has in my entire life, to be honest. I like to use a mix of celebrity makeup techniques, so I always start with underpainting with some cheek and lip stain. The key here is applying it with a brush. This will help you blend it out without staining your fingers. I use the Etude water stain that you can get on Amazon. It's like $6. Who needs super expensive makeup products to have celebrity caliber makeup? Not me. I say as I pull out my Lancome foundation. Ignore this. You can use whatever foundation you like to use. This just happens to be my favorite. We're not putting it directly onto our face. Onto the back of your hand. You're gonna use a foundation brush to apply it. Use the brush to to apply thin layers, build up the coverage so that it looks very skin-like. I like to blend like partway up my face, letting the area where I put the blush on shine through. This gives the illusion of me having perfect skin because it looks like I'm not wearing any makeup from like right here. We're gonna spot conceal a little bit and I like to use Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. Under the eyes, this is a special technique. I only put the color on my orbital bone. Take your sponge and blend out along that orbital bone, kind of lightly moving up, but don't go right underneath your eye where it would be creased. Leaving the darkness there to make it look more natural, look like I don't have any concealer on under my eyes, while still making them look really bright and fresh. See, it looks so natural. Next, we're doing a bronze balm or a bronzing stick. And no, we're not gonna apply it to our face like that. Mm -mm. Need another brush, preferably a flat little dense one. We're gonna press it into the skin. She dropped some gems in that video. It's nice to have like a good like beat that like doesn't really require too much product or too much work and can be done in like 10 minutes or less but still looks absolutely amazing i think i'm just gonna use the slightest amount of this lip tint i'm trying to work so quick girls because this lip tint actually that doesn't look too bad the, the reason why i was moving so fast is because this stains so i was so scared it was gonna look terrible like it would have a little patch right in the middle where i put it down but it's not there there's no patch Okay, this looks kind of crazy right now, but I am going to trust the process. I'm going to go that extra step and just add a little bit to the middle of my nose. And boom. So now we're just going to add our foundation, but we're not going to blend it to like this part of my face. And we're going to use a brush to lightly blend coverage or build coverage. So I'm going to be using the e.l.f. Liquid Glow. Girl, this is my favorite, 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 favorite foundation of all time. So I'm going to go in with this brush right here and I'm just going to lightly dab it. So far, so good. Like, I can see what she means. Like, it looks like I'm not really wearing makeup. I have the e.l.f. Camo, um, Hydrating Camo Concealer. And this brush is really chunky. So I'm just going to put a little bit on the back of my hand. I am going to use this little brush here. Well, I'm not a huge spot conceal type of girl, but I'm just going to go ahead and try it out for today. So now I'm going to put some of this on my occipital bone right here. Look at my base so far. So now we're going to press a cream contour into the skin. I am going to be using the Milk Makeup and then I'm just going to pat that. I would say if you're going to do something like this, use a smaller brush. My favorite tips that she gave were the... Um, lip and che cheek stain and applying it with a brush because I love a good lip stain on my cheeks and on my face I have that literally on my face right now but I always like just assumed like all right just blend it in with your fingers but y'all it ends up looking so patchy and your fingers get stained so the brush technique is a really really good way to blend it in and I was pleasantly surprised because I was expecting the lip stain to stain immediately that one spot that I applied it but it didn't it blended out very very seamlessly like that alone really devoured and the fact that she does that before she does anything else for some reason the way you layer your makeup when you don't do foundation it just looks so natural, especially if you start off with something like blush or even like contour. I want to start, you know, experimenting with that a little bit because I don't really like heavy foundation every day. And when I do apply foundation, it's like the e.l.f. halo glow and a couple of dots here and there just because it feels too heavy when I'm doing too much throughout the day. So this is a very, very good technique for an everyday look. This whole entire base with all of these tips took me like 
10 minutes or less. The only thing I kind of tussled with a little bit was the cream contour on the brush. Honestly, I'm probably going to stick to just applying it with my very, very fine, sharp angled brush um, that's a little bit thicker. Um, and then blending it in with a beauty blender because it just gives me more of like a natural, precise look because I feel like that method for my specific face, it just got the contour everywhere. This girl truly did put me onto game and actually changed the way I do my makeup because look at my base right now. Like it looks different than I usually do and it's because I followed that tip. And y'all, not only do you look flawless, but it looks like you're not wearing shit. Because I have a little bit of a bone to pick with that contour hack, I'm going to have to put it in eight because it still did what it had to do. This matcha I made today is so good. Now let's go into layering um, your base. Spray finishing spray between every step, especially if you like to do your skin first. It keeps the skin looking fresh for hours and the base just looks soft and airbrushed. If this tip I have heard a lot. So let's go ahead and spray my face before I set it. So I just set my entire face, so I'm gonna go in with some more setting spray. I just don't really do it because, girl, to be honest, I don't have time to be picking up my setting spray every after every set and layer of my makeup. But if you are going to do a makeup look where it's like very simple, the base is basically like one layer, this could definitely work um, and it would definitely make it last a lot longer. Um, for me, it didn't really make it look more airbrushed. If anything, I had to be a little bit more careful with how fast I moved because I definitely have to wait until everything is set before I move things around um so that is a little bit more time consuming but if you um are having a long day maybe you're going to the gym and you want to do a beat or maybe you're going to school I would recommend that trick but it is going to be a little bit more time consuming so I'm gonna have to put that tip in nibbled just because I've heard this tip before and it's not something that's practical to do every day. So now we're gonna get into highlighting. Micro highlighting. Go in with your blush and bronzer. Now we're gonna follow this mouth. Finish off with the top of the eyebrow. Right now you're gonna wanna put a line here, here, and here. You wanna make sure that the lines are parallel to each other and that the tip of your nose matches the tip of your eyebrow and eyelash. Look how much structure that this side has compared to this side where everything is kind of just blah. You see the difference? Go try this out immediately. Now, I don't have a white eyeliner pencil like that, but honestly, this video made me want to go get one. But I'm curious to see how it'll look on my dark skin, but I did try it with a very, very similar color. Instead of using white eyeshadow, I think I'm going to use the base color from um, the Kylie Cosmetics eyeshadow palette. I'm going to go right in here. I'm a little bit nervous. I'm going to go really, really light-handed here. Right underneath the brow bone. Make sure that they're parallel to each other. So far, it's looking kind of good. It's looking like it's going to eat. Also right in here. Okay. And then right on my lip. I really hope this blends in well because, girl, if it doesn't... <laughs> If this does not blend in well, I want to be very hurt. I think I'm going to use this fluffier concealer brush to blend it in. I do have to really work to get it to blend in, especially on like my drier areas of my face. I feel like this is definitely something you need a cream eyeshadow for, but you can make it work with powder, but you definitely have to blend it in a lot more. It's a good way to clean up your eye uh, liner too and eyeshadow. Honestly, I'm not too mad at it. It just takes a while to blend in, but I am not mad at it, girls. Look at the difference between this side and this side. Honestly, I'm really curious to see how that white liner would look on my skin tone, so you should definitely go follow me on TikTok because if I, which I probably am going to try it with white liner, I want you guys to go check that out, especially if you're a brown skin girl so you can see how it looks on you. But honestly, yo, this is going to be my go-to, especially in pictures. And pictures did y'all see the pictures i posted on instagram that's what i did that's what i did and they look fire so also go follow me what are you doing 
I truly don't even have much more to say. When I do try this out with an actual eye pencil, I want to try it with one that's white and one that's like more tan or like cream color to see how it would look on my skin tone. So again, follow me on TikTok so you don't miss that. I'm really curious to see how it would look on my skin tone. But honestly, that lifted my face. Micro highlighting, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Like the whole theory behind makeup and the reason why it makes people look good especially if you do it in a certain way is because if you use certain colors and certain highlights of your face or um you know di uh, divots in your face it's gonna give yourself a contrasted like snatched look and this is that look okay especially if you're taking pictures 10 out of 10 freaking recommend do i even have to say <laughs> do i even have to say it devoured eight left no crumbs at all now this one is one that i've seen everywhere and yo i was a little bit like okay like these little like stupid like oh put a spoon to your fucking whatever eye and do a perfect cut crease those type of hacks always kind of piss me off because i'm like girl just apply your damn eyeshadow and keep it pushing no 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 exactly but honestly i didn't realize the impact that this specific hack had on my entire base until i tried it for myself i am kind of excited to try because i feel like you can't really go too wrong here except for the blending might be a little bit difficult so i am actually going to use this like solar color here because i don't want to go too hard it's just an eyeshadow but i don't i don't want to do too vibrant of a blush so I am going to grab my lovely fingers. I feel like that's at about the right spot. I'm just really trying not to touch my face because I really don't want to ruin my base. <gasps> Hold one. Look at that placement. Oh, that's beautiful. Girl, that's about to be my new technique. Like... You just have to blend it out a little bit after you do that, but that is so pretty. Oh my god. It looks so silly. It looks like, all right, girl, it's not going to do nothing. It just applied in the most perfect spot imaginable. You would think it would leave a little bit of a harsh line, but it kind of just constricts the brush to one certain area. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to like suddenly be like super harsh. If anything, it's more flawless. Like you have to do a lot less blending. All you have to do is just do this, use the brush a couple of times, boom, 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 and you have the perfect blush. It applies in the perfect area, a little bit under your eye, swept up in the perfect uh, arch of your... um whatever this is called, your cheekbone. <laughs> I mean, do I even have to say it? Devoured. So, reverse contouring is something I've been doing with my makeup for a very, very long time. I prefer to do that with my nose contour because it just makes my actual contour stand out more but I don't really do it exactly like that so you're supposed to use a powder um and a beauty blender or a powder sponge and just take this down the side of your nose this is something I've been doing for a while now but the way this girl blended it I really want to try it and it seems like she like let it sit there for a little while and then she kind of like blended it out with her fingers. I was being really light-handed with a lot of this because I'm trying to go take fast in pictures, so. I find that in pictures, it really like flashback Mary, okay? Um, I do like blend it in a little bit more, make it a little bit more soft. Um, so the whole like blending it in with your fingers thing. Mm. And for me, this area of my face is so easy to get patchy it doesn't matter what type of products i use how i do my products none of that that area if i even lightly touch it it will all come off so i'm gonna have to put that one in cute Aww. because it's not a new one i have been somewhat doing it but just with a little bit of a different technique and this is the finalized hair list 
And you guys, I am working on one where I do beauty tips and hacks and tricks. So make sure you guys are subscribed so you don't miss that. Anyways, let me know in the comments down below what your favorite hack was, what surprised you, what didn't surprise you. And yeah, anyways, guys, it has been Tima and I'll see you on another video soon. Bye, guys. <laughs>